I got my shocks all figured out and got them ordered the other day. So now I figured I need to I need a good base to work off from. So I went in and took everything out of the car, started cleaning that all up and painting it with well through primer and then I've got I gotta go over the rails and stuff for the um rockers, inner rockers. Get those all cleaned up and primed. Because what I think I'm going to do is basically get, get the car level again, get those frame rails in, leveled and squared, and then weld those 50% to the, to the um, inner rockers, and then put the transmission mount in, get that all squared up and leveled, and then work my way back and get everything finalized, everything final welded, or as best I can do with where I'm at right now. And then we can start with the back half of the car, or the back third of the car, really. So, I'll show you some progress. So the frame rails are all cleaned up, just de-rusted them. They've been sitting for a month or so in the in the southern humidity. So we got those all cleaned up. These are the back sides. So this is the inner rocker is going to go. So I got those all cleaned up, and I'll do the weld through primer on here and put weld through primer all the way around these ends. This is where it goes to the floor pans and then into the Miata itself. So we'll get that all cleaned up, do the same thing to the Miata, but we're making progress. Well I got the car re-leveled so it's perfectly level to the earth. I went in and put my rails in. Now that those are all dry and checked to make sure everything was going to work and I got all the areas sanded correctly and got them level. So now I have everything primed. So I just primed it a minute ago. We're going to let it set about, I don't know, probably an hour or so. Put the rails back in, tap, or, uh, get them all leveled up. And then what I'm going to use back here is my little porta power kind of make sure they're tight because they're a little loose on the back compared to the front. So I'll put the porter power on there, push them up against the um, inner rocker arms really well, and then we can start tacking in place. We just finished our final setup for the car. So that was on a piece of inch and a half by inch and a half square stock on the rails and that showed zero degrees and then we've checked the body here that's at zero degrees we check the radiator support that's at zero degrees in each rail this rail is at zero degrees and I think that rail over there is within a tenth and then both rocker arms this one's at zero and that over there is within a tenth so before I set everything Put spreader bar on there just to kind of tighten up the gap on each side. So now they're all closed up. Everything's primed and ready to weld. So we will start putting some welds in place and then this will be our base to build everything else off from. So what I did was kind of mock everything up in place but I don't want to go too much farther towards the back because you know, we're building on errors, building on errors. So now this sets everything for the chassis. Level, straight, square. It'll be welded in place. Um, we've got our drive shaft now, so we can put that in. Um, I've got some ideas I'll show you in the future with the mufflers. And we'll continue building backwards. And hopefully in a week or two, we'll have gas tank in. And the structure for the that attaches the the kickups to the rear bumper. Should have the shocks in place and everything welded up pretty tight. So we'll show you that when we get there. We're back on the Astri again. Took some time off to get a lot of other projects done and now I have some time freed up to work on this. So today we're going to be mounting the seats. So these are from a late third generation mid 90's Camaro. Um, fit very nice, just making the mounts for the car. 
So as you can kind of see, right now we're just going to run bars across. So these are inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing with eighth inch wall. And right now they fit underneath the drive shaft. So we'll have to see when the drive shaft is in and everything and these are put in place. But what we're going to have to do is relieve these into the sidewall so they'll actually sit on top of the bottom section of the frame and then we'll have to window out a little bit um, for the bolt hole to mount these in but other side, otherwise everything should work fine we'll show you more well I made a nice inch and a half slot in the rail so the inch and a half tube is now sitting on each rail and I already know that I'm going to have to probably notch this out like this in order to get the seat in for this one. And then we will put move this bar back so that it's 13 inches from center line to center line as it sits up. Then we'll be able to put the seat in. So I'm probably going to test fit the seat on the driver's side and see what more we need to cut out. We've got the pocket cut out for fitting the back left seat mount in down in here and then clearancing for all the mechanism and stuff. So I think the next thing is is get the rails moving a little bit better and drill some holes in the back because that's kind of fixed. Got a little bit of rock yet but we'll play with that, get that a little closer, but we're pretty centered on the steering wheel. The steering wheel's just set in there, of course. But um looks like we've got plenty of room. This is the view from the passenger side, the driver's seat. So I think we'll have enough room for the transmission tunnel. Build that up around here. Get enough room to get the transmission out. I think I'll build a brace. Goes up like this, so we'll have some structure to uh, mount the floor pans to. So we'll keep going along and getting things fitted. So now we have the seat all sitting flat and not rocking. On the place. We see it right back in there. It was just touching right here. So we'll leave that a little bit more and it's ready to start drilling some holes. Passenger side is a lot easier. Just had a little bit of clearance to do because it doesn't have I guess a lumbar support or something but it fits in there. So we've got everything clearanced out. Down here is all it really took. Those seats are sitting in there. We have they're not rocky. So, and those are just sitting on the bars, and the back bar is resting on the bottom of the frame rail. And this is just sitting on that tube. I've got some bracing and stuff underneath to make sure that tube doesn't go down too far, but I think that'll work. And I've tried to put both seats in the middle of their adjustment range. So the driver's side has about 8 or 9 inches of movement, and the passenger side has about, I don't know, 5 or 6. And I did measure, when I picked up the seats last weekend, from this surface here to the back of the seat, just to give me a rough estimate, estimate um, of what the driver of the vehicle usually sits in. So he's got little legs. so. I think it should give us plenty of room, but before I do the final welding in that, of course, I'll have him sit in the seat, and we got to get steering column mounted and brake pedals and all that stuff, so we got a little bit more to do, but that's roughed in, so we'll get some seat holes in it, and we'll move forward. So i got the rear bar for the seat supports all measured out and drilled, so that's about a one-inch hole. I'm going to take a one inch 
piece of tubing, eighth inch wall. We'll cut that down to an inch and a half and weld that in place and grind it down and that'll keep that from squishing. And then we'll use some uh, grade eight bolts to hold those down in place. So it's raining pretty good out here today so I can't use my cutoff saw outside. So I'll do that tomorrow morning. We'll work on something else. I got all the tubes welded in and ground down. So this is the driver's side rear seat mount. And this is the passenger side. So tacked them in place, checked them against the seat frames, and everything looks good. So we'll put this in and start test fitting seats again and see how we go. It's the end of the day. And I've got the two seat support bars all welded in place. So since I talked to you last, went ahead and um, made the front bar mount. So I drilled and again put the one inch OD, three quarter ID plugs in there. And cut it to length. And then I had, once everything worked out, these ended up basically on the center line. This is still hot. So I just V'd that out. Got that all to fit nice and extended the tube all the way down to the bottom. It sticks out a little bit, but I gotta weld that when I flip the car over and um, I can grind that one flat, but this will give us a general idea. So, 7 8 bolts fit all the way through there and actually allow the seat to rattle around a little bit. So, now what I have to do tomorrow is get this bar fitted one last time to make sure everything's level and square. Then I'll still, you know, weld it down in through here, and then um, close this all in so that you can take the seat in and out, but add the strength back to the part itself. Been busy this morning, so this is the passenger side. And I wanted to do all the closeouts for the sides, so the seat can rest on this inch and a half bar. These are just a little inset so I can weld them up. But pretty happy with that. So we'll go ahead and do one final seat check. Now this bar is still loose of course so I can set my final length. But um, get back from lunch I'll go ahead and weld all this in. And then we'll start on the other side. Show you more. Got all the welding done except the cross brace. So I want to do one final fitting. And as you can tell, do some grinding. Make it cleaned up and look nice. But uh, everything's done on the driver's side. I just finished everything up here on the passenger side. So got some welds to clean up and some areas to make look pretty. And then we'll go ahead and put the cross brace in, get that all fitted up. But uh, now the seats move back and forth, they're full travel, and everything looks good. Just finished up doing a rough grind on those. I'll do some finished grinding when I get over to my other shop and got a nice smaller 2 inch air grinder, so we can make that look a little prettier before we push sheet metal all over it. And do the same thing on this side. So now I'll get the back seat support in. And we'll call it good. The seats are all bolted in now. So I use some half inch grid 8 bolts. Um, the ones on the inch and a half tubing are a little long, but we can get shorter ones of those. And I have to drill this bolt back in here down through the bottom of the frame here on the bottom side but that's all bolted together and they slide their full travel so feel nice and sturdy in the car so I'll finish up the weld on the back tube and get that ground down and the seats are done and it should give us enough room for a transmission tunnel That'll be a little bit later. 
but we'll get the steering wheel mounted and start working on the dash and get the rear end <clears throat> finally mounted and we'll make some good progress here but I'll be taking a two week break going on vacation but as soon as we're done with that we'll get back on the Astrid.